Hey everybody, I've had a lot of people asking about my destiny board so I figured I'd go ahead and take a quick minute to show you. Alright, let's start over here in the mage area. As you can see, it's level 1 for every mage weapon. No spec in any of this. Uh, then you go down to the mage armor. I'm 100 in all cloth. Got 100 on the mage cow for my... Uh, claw build there. 100 on the mage sandals. Not a whole lot in between. Uh, then we look at these weapons over here. We've got the torch. Obviously 100 on daggers. Uh, we've got 100 spec on claws. 28 on artifact. Oh wow, that's... Let's just go ahead and do that. Alright, and we got, you know, 18 and 30 on the other daggers there. Uh, a lot of people think I'm 400 spec for whatever reason. I'm not really even close, but 100 is plenty. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. All right, and then, uh, yeah, not much else over here. Then we go to the leather gear, merc jacket, well, leather armor. 100, of course. Uh, and you see I got a little bit on the other leather armors. Not a whole lot. Uh, crossbows, which I was recently using. A lot of people thought I had a ton of spec. I have 40 and a little bit in 27 in the artifact. Uh, I actually had 27 from way back when when I was actually using the siege bow quite a bit and I just kind of respect into it. But yeah, okay. Hammers, maces, nothing. Although for some reason I can use two or six maces. Uh, tank armor, I can use all that good stuff up to T7. Uh, not a whole lot of spec in it though. So that's basically what I've got going on. And if you look, oops, if you look at my item power while using the 4.1 masterpiece, uh, you got 1115 here. 255 from the mastery bonus. That's that's quite a bit. And of course I can always overcharge. You got that 1255. So Yes, I do hit hard. I don't always use Masterpiece. But if you're looking to do about the same damage, you want to hit the same item power numbers. You may need high spec, you may not. Oh, and as a side note, a couple other interesting things to look at. Uh, if we go to stats here, you can see I have 190 million fame for killing players. And that's with two GVGs, which both those were kind of a joke. You can see I only got not even 400k fame from those two GVGs when normally people get millions upon millions, but uh, that's mostly just solo PvP. Uh, fame for killing mobs, only 17.3 million. A lot of people have more than that. It's not really considered a whole lot, especially since getting on 100 spec on a weapon is about, I think, 12 million. Don't quote me on that. I really don't know. I don't really fame farm. Uh, obviously, I, yeah, I did some gathering and some crafting. Uh, but then also, if you go ahead and look at the rankings, I'm way over here. So I guess they don't have a ranking for just fame for killing mobs, but for kill value, damn mojo, for kill value, see, I am at uh, 78th. Not, not terrible. Uh, I got some work to do. But first I want to take a minute to look at all the weapons that I've used in the past, or most of the weapons anyways, and kind of go over their strengths and weaknesses. First of all, there's the Bloodletter. This weapon is very good at catching up to people, very good at getting away. It also has moderate damage, so it's, it's an all-around pretty good weapon. Bloodletter can't get you out of every situation, though. Next up is the basic crossbow. This weapon hits very hard, but it can take some time to actually hit. So I usually just use it with the scholar robe in order to get that big hit off right off the bat. As you can see, it dismounts weaker mounts very easily, so you can actually get some uh, good ganks with this weapon.
notice that I'm using 4.1 overcharged and the enemy is using 7.1 gear. That just tells you how much damage this bow does. The downside of the crossbow, however, is that it has no mobility whatsoever. So, once you're committed to the fight, you're not getting away, so you either win or you die. Now in this clip, there's an important PvP lesson to be learned here. As I'm getting chased by three people, I know that I'm not going to be able to beat them all. But I pick a target, the guy with the best gear. Since I notice that he's using claws, I save my abilities that can get interrupted by the claws, and I go ahead and use every other ability as quickly as I can before they start really laying into me. That way, as soon as all their claw disembowel is over, I can just combo them and finish them. Claymore is a great PvP weapon as well. With the build that I use, the Graveguard Helmet with the Cleric Robe, it really excels at just having two health bars essentially, and you can have great comeback fights with this build. It's also worth noting that because you have so much heals with this build, you can easily bait people into fights that they wouldn't normally take. Notice as I use the Cleric Robe to make myself immune to damage as I use the Graveguard Helmet to heal myself. This makes you heal much more. Last but not least is the Great Axe. This weapon is very good at solo PvP, and it also excels at small group PvP. In this clip I use the Hunter Hood and the Mercenary Jacket with my Great Axe. Pay attention to the red skull above my head. The Curse Staff special ability is that that skull blows up after a few seconds and does a ton of damage. I save my Hunter Hood's Reflect for when that skull is going to pop. Now in this clip there's a few things to pay attention to. The Great Axe spin actually gets cancelled by the Claw's disembowel, so I try to save it until after he disembowels. I also try to save my Hunter Hood Reflect, because that way it'll reflect the most damage. And I also try to save my Bloodlust from my Mercenary Jacket, because between the Reflect and my Spinning Attack, I will get the most heals that way. Now the first thing you'll notice in this clip is that I start attacking a mob. I'm actually doing this to bait the guy into thinking he can win the fight uh, when I know very well that he can't. As you can see, the Great Axe performs very well in solo PvP. You may run into some problems against war bows because they can root you and just kite you in general. This is what you don't do in one of these neutral PvP zones. I got too cocky and let the bow attack me also. This made me overcommit into a 1v2 situation that I honestly could not win. And unfortunately the Great Axe doesn't have enough mobility to escape from one of these situations. As I said, in small group PvP, the Great Axe is very, very good as long as you don't get stunned.
Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully uh, some of you benefited from this different kind of format here. I don't normally talk over my clips, but uh, peace. Oh, and P.S. My Windows is activated now, so once I run through all those clips of the unactivated stuff, uh, you won't ever see it again. So shut up! <laughs>